Hello, my name is Adam Krieger with Preferred Strategies. Today we're going to walk through a brief uh, introduction to a sales demo for uh, Power Pivot, a new plugin to uh, Microsoft uh, Office Excel, version 2010 or 2013. We'll walk through some of the steps here in a minute. Um, some of the prerequisites, if you don't have Power Pivot installed, we'll pull those up real quick. So again, it, uh, it's a free add-in to uh, Excel 2010. It's actually bundled right in with uh, 2013. Uh, the requ requirement is a .NET Framework 4.0, Visual Studio Tools uh, 2010 for Office Runtime. And uh, when you get started, you'll have to either install, if you're ex Excel 2010, either a 32-bit version or 64-bit version. Um, you can go out and access the, uh, the downloads at uh, just go to powerpivot.com and it'll redirect you to the right pages there on the Microsoft site. Um, you can try and just install it. It may actually, um, if it doesn't work, it, you may have to actually go back and uh, install, uninstall and then install the .NET Framework and Visual Studio first and then the, the plugin for your applicable version. Now we actually did is, um, if you don't have this file of this sales demo, feel free to reach out to Preferred Strategies. Um, and we can, can send you a copy to, uh, to walk through the demo. Um, but we did create a YouTube video that kind of walks through just logging on, where to go to the, the Microsoft um, site to, uh, to download Power Pivot if you're on 2010. Like I said, if it's 2013, that's what you have. It should be part of it. Um, and then here's our contact information at Preferred Strategies. If you have any questions about the demo or want more information or would like to even do a, a free trial, uh, and then there's a document here that kind of goes through a click by click, pretty much the same steps we're going to do here together in a live uh, fashion. We've actually put together in a document here, so you can kind of click through the document and um, pretty much get all the same uh, steps that we're going to do here on the uh, the YouTube video. So first, I'm going to do you'd open up the spreadsheet uh, if it prompts you to enable editing, then um, you know you want to do that. You may need to save the spreadsheet out and then open it up again. Um, if you just downloaded it from, from our website. You'll notice some tabs here at the bottom, uh, the Sales Analysis tab. We're going to start there and kind of walk through the, the different scenarios. So if I start here at the Sales Analysis, first thing I want to do is go up here and show Hide Report Slicers. This is one of our sales examples for um, connected right at J.D. Edwards uh, sales module. And um, what we're showing here is, is one of our out-of-box um, Power Pivot models that could connect directly to your, your JD Edwards sales transactions. So something like what you're seeing here could be connected and running um, within minutes. So you can see here across the top just some of the conceptual if you're new to Power Pivot. Um, the slicers are kind of predefined filters. Uh, we've grabbed some of them that are, are fairly common region, sales rep channel, maybe product group, subgroup, and, and customer. Uh, anything that's really how you roll up sales could be something that could be adjusted and, and modified in, in those. We've also got some charts by some of those sim same uh, slicers as well. In this case, there's a total product group, customers, sales channel, sales rep, and a region. And then we've got some pivot tables. So we're going to kind of walk through here. First thing we do, let's say we open this up, and right now we can see it's your filter down to 2008. So this is all reflecting 2008 data. If I click on 2009 we'll see the data change and now we're looking at 2009 information. Let's just focus on maybe one quarter. So if I click here on 2009 Q4, we're going to now see the data for just Q4 of 2009. Let's say we want to look at just central region. So now we're seeing just central and maybe I'm going to hold down control on my keyboard. We'll choose west as well. And I can see here that uh, my sales and gross profit by mouse over gives me the amounts that we have there. I can see that most of my sales are, in this case, coming from Walmart. Let's go ahead and create a filter on Walmart, Walmart and just analyze the sales for Walmart specifically. So we'll click on Walmart. So now if we look at the remaining charts, we can see the different products, um, the group of products, region, sales reps, channels. So real quick, uh, you know, we've grabbed some of these slicers. If we go up here at the top and show or hide report slicer labels, if we wanted to print or just be aware of, okay, what are all the de defined filters that have, have been selected, then I can go ahead and print those out um, or be aware of, of those in the, the descriptions at the top. We can also just hide these slicers. Let's go down and look at some of the pivot tables as an example. 
So in this case, we've got a sales by product group uh, pivot table and a sales by region. If we start here, we've got the majority of sales here in TV and video. So if I go ahead and click on the, uh, the plus on TV and video, then I can see the breakdown and maybe product subgroup for that, uh, that product group. In this case, the majority of sales and, and highest gross profit coming in on televisions go into that. And clearly the LCD TVs is, is the, um, has the largest uh, sales and gross profit and gross profit percent. Uh, if we want to look at maybe the breakdown by region, in this case we've got Central. Drilling into Central, we can see the sales rep, Robert O'Neill. So maybe let's now take a look and say, okay, let's just take a look at Robert O'Neill's sales specifically. If I go back up and show our report slicers, let's go ahead and drop um, our customer. I'm going to go ahead and add a sales rep and just filter down on just Robert O'Neill. Okay. And next thing we're going to do is we can go back and look at the charts, but I'm also going to go to the next tab, which is like the sales analysis trends tab. Okay. So on this tab, we can actually see some trending. We've got, you know, three months here, so just the Q4 activity for 2009. Sales, gross profit, gross profit percent. And then down here, we've got uh, the same that's uh, charted. And then we've got a pivot table down here as well. So let's go in and first off, let's remove our filter on year. We're going to look at just Q4 of 2009 compared to Q4 of 2008 and 2007. So if I go ahead and hold control on my keyboard and select 2008 Q4 and 2007 Q4 and then let go. Now we can see just the quarterly trend for those three quarters. I can see, look at just the uh, that fourth quarter for the three months for 2007, 2008, 2009. I can see here I'm kind of in the green being 2009. Gross profit percent's up. However, it seems like our dollars for sales and gross profit seem to be trending downward. Let's take a look at the whole entire year. So if I go ahead and just remove the filter here on uh, year and quarter. Our trend charts are now looking at the entire year instead of just the fourth quarter. Um, and then our charts are even looking at the entire year sales as well. So clearly here for Robert O'Neill, we've got 2007 and 2008. 2009 appears to be better than 2008, however, much less than 2007. And then we drill down here to the pivot table. We've got the breakdown of the product grouping on the left, or on, as the rows and the columns. We've got by year. If we go and drill into 2009, right? But then we get a breakdown here by quarter: one, two, three, four. Drill into the quarter, get the breakdown by month, so you can analyze the sales there. Then we can go ahead and just drill into this table as well, and get a breakdown of the different product groups, subgroups, all the way down to the products. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, remove some of our, our slicers here on uh, region and sales rep. And we're going to do some more ad hoc. You'll notice here as I remove those, the data and the charts and the tables now reflect uh, the whole subset of data. I'm going to switch over here to the sales ad hoc tab. And in this case, this is more uh, free form. Those that we showed you on the last couple tabs were some predefined charts and pivot tables and slicers. Um, but sometimes you might want to be answering a specific question and, and want to do it from starting something like on this tab. In this case, I've got a, a predefined pivot table and a chart built off of that pivot table. So I just select a, a cell in the pivot table. Um, first thing I need to do is, is uh, you know, identify where the, the available options for me to drag uh, uh, fields into the rows and columns and, 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 and amounts and units. So under the pivot tool table uh, tools, if you don't see a, the field list available, you need to go in here to options and go to field list. Okay. So at this point, we can see here, here's a list of the, 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 the objects that we've defined in this sales power pivot model for JDE. If I scroll down, month to date, quarter to date, year to date calcs, then we get some sales dimensions. So under our sales dimensions, if I scroll down, I want, let's say, region. I can go ahead and just drag region into my row labels or just check the box next to region. So in this case I'm just now looking at region. Let me go back up and we're going to look at maybe our current year year-to-date extended amount compared to our prior year year-to-date extended amount. By clicking on those, those actually drop into my values. You can see the chart now reflecting the current year sales versus the prior year year-to-date sales by region. Let's say we want within each region see a breakdown by customer. So if I go down here to our sold to address name, I'll just drop that in below region. 
and now you can see within each region we've got a list of customers let's say we want to look at just the top three customers within each region okay we can actually right click on the uh, any customer here in the in the group right click choose filter and go to top 10 and now we'll get prompt for the filter where it says top 10 I'm going to make that 10 a 3 so now we're looking at really just the the top three we wanted to kind of sort our region so total sales dollars in order by region if I just click up here on the sale the amount next to uh, central right click on that do sort largest to smallest West is actually my largest region based on those sales. If I go and go on and even sort the customers within the region, then I go ahead and sort largest and smallest there as well. Okay. So now, what if we wanted to look at not the top three customers by region, but the top three customers overall? We can just go back to our row labels on the right hand side, left click on the region, and choose Remove Field. And now we're going to get charted just those top three customers across all regions lumped together. And now maybe we want to see a breakdown by product group. So I go up here and grab product group and drag that below my customer. I can see within each customer the breakdown of all the different products. Right? So that might be one way to look at it. What are the top products for each customer of the top three? Or swap it around and say, okay, within each product group, let's look at my top three customers by product. And you can see sometimes they, they change here based on the different products. Okay? So it's just a real quick example. Like I said, this is a, one of our sales models um, that we can uh, share with you if you want to, to tinker on your own and then if you want to work on a free trial to get it connected to your J.D. Edwards data. Uh, we'd love to chat with you about that. So um, if you have any questions, um, we'd love to hear from you. If you uh, have any issues as you're walking through the, the demo or, or have trouble getting PowerPivot installed, feel free to reach out to Preferred Strategies, and uh, we'd love to assist. Thank you very much. We look forward to hearing from you.